And right now it's time for that time when we have our special guest. Tonight's special guest is Simon Prast. Simon is putting his hand up to become the next mayor of the super city, Auckland. Simon believes his law degree and his acting career position him well to develop a different kind of Auckland. He believes the creation of the super city is the best opportunity to not have more of the same. Simon Prast. Welcome to The Beat Goes On, thank you. Our first mayoral candidate for 2010. Thank you for having me. What's the history of Prast? Well, I do understand it comes from Holland, and uh, I think it's another word for priest. And have you always been a godly man, Simon? <laughs> <laughs> Godlike or godly? Um, I guess if you work on, uh, on uh, a play by Shakespeare, uh, you work with God, and to that extent, uh, yes, I am. Speaking of plays and Shakespeare, you're an actor. So most, most people would probably remember me from, um, most notoriously from Gloss, I suspect, mm. <laughs> um, which I did out of drama school. I went to the Theatre Corporate Drama School up here in Auckland. But prior to that, I went to the University of Auckland, graduated with a law degree. So um, I guess I'm the worst of all possible worlds. I'm an actor with a law degree. When did you first think, I want to be an actor? Uh, well, I went to Auckland Grammar when John Graham was there, and uh, I had a, a fabulous time at, at grammar and um, in my final year I did Death of a Salesman as a seventh former. And it's a complex play isn't it? Uh, isn't it? Well it is a complex mm. play, it's uh, uh, one of the great classics themes of the 20th century yeah, yeah. Uh, for sure and uh, um, I, I ended up actually directing the play uh, for Auckland Theatre Company and um, I got to speak to Arthur Miller uh, himself wow. and I have a, an autographed copy of, of Death of a Salesman by Arthur Miller but it was that one play that um, not when he was married to Marilyn Monroe. No, no, no. Sadly, <laughs> sadly not. Then they, they, that all came came adrift in the early 1960s. He uh, was very happily married to a photographer, Inga Morath, for a very long time. I, I love of the of the written word. I think is um, is something that perhaps in our televisual age we've lost a little bit of, and that's something that working in the theatre, uh, coming to you know coming to meet Tennessee Williams, Arthur Miller, of course Shakespeare, but Tom Stoppard, um, David Hare. Um, there, it, it's such a, a soul-expanding experience. How does acting and uh, how, do, how does it prepare you for real life? How, just in everyday life. Well, you, you, you see things differently, don't you? After being an actor, you see things. Uh, well, there are there is the the practical side of being an actor, and uh, an actor's life is one where you um, you you don't get you know you audition, but you don't get the jobs. You know, the more auditions you do, you know, it's not as if you're getting auditions all the time uh, um, or getting parts all the time. And so you have to be sensible and frugal with your income. Mm -hmm. And um, this is one of the things, of course, that uh, I came between the resting periods, as I say. The resting <laughs> periods. Well, I, I, I did gloss in 1987, 1988, yeah. 1989. Mm -hmm. And it was going to go into a fourth series and in, into 1990. And of course, I had spent the fourth series income in advance. <laughs> And uh, it didn't come to pass, and uh, I ended up being a waiter at Vinnie's restaurant in um, Jervoice Road. And I was wondering why my tips were so small. And that's because everyone thought I owned the restaurant, you see. So um, a, as an actor, you, uh, you have a very practical um, mm. view of life. You know, uh, um, people might think you're an arty fart, but mm. not really. I think that you have a very, you become very good at judging or assessing mm. character. You know, you experience people's energies as much as what they say, it's what they, mm. who they are. And um, I think that being a good judge of character, it certainly served me well at the Auckland Theatre Company when I'm casting. You know, you, you get to see many, many, many actors. And um, certainly it was my experience that, that the actor who's going to play the role, more often than not, would clearly, clearly present themselves as, as the one who wanted it the most and the one who was the most appropriate for the role. Look, we all, we all play a role in life. Life seems to be, um, I've often thought that we're on a stage, aren't we? And, uh, mm -hmm. All the world's a stage. Yeah, all the world's a stage. It is a great saying. And of course, Auckland is a stage. And uh, you're looking at this stage called Auckland. And you're saying to so. yourself, this could be a better play. It well, could be a better play. That's what you're actually saying to yourself, aren't you? I, um, I, I guess I can speak to you tonight as a voter as much as a candidate. Yeah. And one of the reasons that I put my hand up was as a voter. And I was the third candidate to announce. I didn't believe, and I don't believe, that, that Mr. Banks or Mr. Brown are the face and voice of Auckland in the 21st century. 
And I did my homework and I, I um, um, had a look through the Royal Commission report in Auckland where it has the, the job description yeah. or the role description, if you like. Yeah. We're going to call this an audition. That's what it is. Yes. And uh, you're uh, applying for a role. That's right. <laughs> it's it's one big audition. Yeah. You know, and let's not forget that it's a try before you buy situation. And the Royal Commission describes the mayoralty as uh, Auckland needs an inspirational leader, inclusive in style, decisive in action, capable of articulating a shared vision, inclusive inspirational, articulate, decisive. I could do that. Yeah. I, I, I had to do this at, at, I know this, at Auckland Theatre Company. This is You've my... You've been doing this all your life. That's right. Yes, that's right. Yeah. This is, this is, if I'm good at anything, I'm, I could do that. Or well, talk is cheap mm -hmm. and people's votes aren't. And I'm, as a, as a voter, I'm not really interested in what people promise mm -hmm. because I can promise you the world. It's your record that we must all run on, mm -hmm. you know? And I'm very happy to run on, on my record of public service for my hometown, both with the Auckland Theatre Company and the Auckland Festival, which now exist apart from me. I like to think that they're assets for the region. And um, I'm very happy to compare my credentials, my leadership credentials, if you like, with the other main contenders. This is your hometown. You are born and brought up in Auckland. You have to love it. How has Auckland been to you? I think there's been a remarkable absence of leadership in Auckland um, in my, uh, certainly in, in my recent lifetime. Uh, as I said, I'm, I'm one of Kennedy's children, born yeah. in 1962, and Dubmar Robinson was the mayor of Auckland at that time. And so whenever I think of the mayor of Auckland, I have an image of him. Mm -hmm. And of course, he was the man who single-handedly stopped the effluent of Auckland being pumped into the Waitemata Harbour. Mm. Now, were it not for that one man, we wouldn't be looking at the sparkling blue, we'd be looking at the sparkling poo, <laughs> you know. And that so he had a vision. He had a vision, yeah. and, and he was not... Uh, th one of the other things which I find difficult to get my head around is that I, I run as an independent. Mm -hmm. I don't think that this is about politics. I think this is about place. And it's about getting all of Auckland, to the greatest extent possible, on the same page so that the energy of 1.3 million people can be harnessed and we move forward. Mm -hmm. The only word on the crest of Auckland is advance. The only direction I propose we move is forward. I don't run as the National Party candidate. Mm. I don't run as the Labour Party candidate. I run as your candidate, the candidate for Auckland, because this is my hometown.